Hi everybody, in this video let's talk about another type of meniscal tear. Let's talk about the meniscal flap tears. There are two types of uh, meniscal flap tears, the vertical flap tear and the horizontal flap tear. Both are unstable lesions. So let's talk a little bit more about these lesions right now. And the first one, the vertical flap tear, that's also known as the parrot beak tear. It originates as a central radial tear that propagates longitudinally towards the periphery of the meniscus. So it starts as a radial tear and it turns to a longitudinal vertical tear, okay? So if it is located at the inner third of the meniscus, the circumferential fibers are okay. So this is not too bad. But if it goes to the periphery of the meniscus, it compromises the circumferential fibers. But the bottom line is they are, uh, uh, it is a unstable lesion and it needs to be treated uh, most of time surgically. Okay. So, uh, how we will see the parrot beak or the vertical flap tear on the MRI of the knee. So, in the short axis of the lesion, so here uh, there is a parrot beak or vertical flap tear. Uh, the posterior horn of the meniscus, we can see the marching cleft sign, okay? So in this first slice here, we can see the cleft sign here. In the second slice, in the sagittal plane, we can see the cleft sign in this region right here. And in this third slice right here, the cleft sign is located in this region right here. So this is how we will see the lesion on the short axis of the meniscus and on the long axis of the meniscus, on the long axis of the lesion, uh, we can see a cleft sign, sometimes a marching cleft sign, and sometimes the slice will pass through the lesion, it will be parallel to the lesion, and the only thing that we can see is that the meniscus is blurred, and I'm going to show an example of this. Uh, in a few seconds. So here is our first example, right? Uh, there is a part big a vertical flap tear uh, at the uh, meniscal body. This is the medial meniscus. So we can see the uh, cleft sign here, a cleft sign here, a cleft sign here. This is a marching cleft sign and the tear is located between the meniscal body and the transition with the posterior horn of the meniscus. And so this is the kind, this is a kind of the short axis of the, of this lesion here. On the long axis of the lesion, on the sagittal plane, we can see that the meniscus is blurred in this region right here. In this area here in the inner portion of the meniscus, we can see that it's irregular, but look that in this plane, it's not a good plane to find that tear that was so obvious on the coronal plane right here. So we have to go to the axial plane and in the axial plane, we can see the part big tear, the vertical flap tear in this region right here. In this case, uh, we acquired the 3D sequences and we reconstructed the images on the axial plane. So it was very useful to, to see this tear right here. And by the way, sometimes we need the axial plane to differentiate between a part big, a vertical flap tear from a radial tear that is occurring at the areas where of transition between the anterior horn and the meniscal body or the meniscal body and the posterior horn. Okay, so keep that in mind. Always uh, double check the axial plane uh, and try to differentiate between a part big, a vertical flap tear and a radial tear. Sometimes it's not easy. Um, let's go to the second case. In this second case, it's another case of a part big, a vertical flap tear uh, occurring. Uh, at the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. So we can see here the marching cleft sign. So this is the short axis of the meniscus or the short axis of the lesion. On the long axis of the lesion, that is the coronal plane in this case, we just see that the meniscus is blurred right here. It's, uh, it's irregular, irregular and blurred, but we cannot identify 
the tear uh, and let's go to the axial plane and the uh, in the axial plane on the axial plane we can see the part big or the vertical flap tear right here again it's not a radial tear that is occurring at the transition between the meniscal body and the posterior horn well, here we can see that it is a part big tear so always look always check the axial plane to that will help you make this distinction between these two types of uh, meniscal tears and sometimes this flap it can it, it is an unstable lesion right so the flap can migrate to different regions and for example the vertical flap tear the flap can migrate to the meniscal femoral recess to the meniscal tibial recess to the joint space so how we will see that on the MRI of the knee so here for example here is a vertical flap tear with a, with a non-displaced fragment and the, uh, that's how we will see this tear on the MRI of the knee in the short axis we see here the cleft sign here is the flap here's the meniscal fragment that is not dislocated and when it dislocates what happened is this this area of the meniscal uh, fragment of the, the meniscal flap uh, we cannot see the meniscus anymore we can see the ghost sign actually a partial ghost sign in this region so at first we can think we that it could be a, a radial tear but always look for displaced fragments okay because that's uh that's how we we will uh make a distinction between sometimes we make a distinction between a partial radial tear and a vertical flap tear with a displaced fragment so and the fragment the uh, some common place where we can find the meniscal fragment is uh, at the meniscal femoral recess at the meniscal tibial recess but it can go to many other places okay so be aware of that be aware of that and this example here we can see the partial ghost sign here look that the meniscus is trun trun truncated right here there is a amputation of the inner portion of the meniscus and it could be a radial tear but you have to look for the meniscal fragment and look here we can find the meniscal fragment uh, that is displaced to the meniscal femoral uh, recess or the upper gutter or the superior gutter right here so and by the way there is a paper that they call this uh, fragment that goes to the meniscal femoral recess they call that the apostrophe sign okay the goes the comma sign is when the meniscal fragment goes to the uh, meniscal tibial recess and when the fragment goes to the meniscal femoral recess or the to the superior or upper gutter they call that the apostrophe sign and here in the axial plane we can see the meniscal fragment right here we can see the meniscal fragment right here at the uh, meniscal femoral recess um, now let's talk about the other type of uh, flap tear the horizontal flap tear so the horizontal flap tear it is a horizontal tear with the displacement of one of the meniscal leaves so the meniscal the meniscus or the meniscal fragment can migrate to the meniscal femoral recess to the meniscal tibial recess or to the joint space and how we will see that on the MRI of the knee so here we this is a, an example or a picture demonstrating a horizontal tear in this region here of the meniscus and when occur uh, a displacement of uh, uh, one of the leaves of the horizontal of a horizontal tear a meniscal horizontal tear uh, one of the main places that the meniscus migrate is uh, around the periphery of the meniscus at the uh, meniscal femoral recess or the meniscal tibial recess but notice here that the morphology of the remaining uh, meniscus is different right now uh, there is no partial ghost sign there is no meniscal truncation what we can see right now is that uh, the meniscus it's somewhat still triangular but it has a lower 
uh, area, a lower volume. Uh, so we can infer that this uh, fragment, it came from a meniscal horizontal tear. So, and, and by the way, I just call a horizontal flap tear when the flap is dislocated, right? Because it's, if it's not dislocated, it's just a horizontal tear. And I'm going to show a, a, an exception uh, to that, but that, generally speaking, uh, the vertical flap tear, I call vertical flap tear or part big tear. If I see that kind of uh, configuration of a tear of the parrot peak tear. But for the horizontal flap tear, I just call horizontal flap tear if the tear is dislocated because, because otherwise it's just a horizontal tear, okay? So just remember uh, that the fragment can go to, to, can migrate to different regions. It's not just in this location that I'm showing showing you right now. And let's go to our first example of a horizontal flap tear, a dislocated horizontal flap tear. Uh, and here we can see the fragment. Here's the meniscal fragment. Here's the flap. And notice that the meniscus is triangular in this region because the tear is not in this region right here. The tear is located at the posterior horn of the middle meniscus look here that we can see the superior leaf, leaf of the posterior horn of the middle meniscus but the inferior leaf of the meniscus is missing right here we cannot see the inferior leaf of the meniscus in this area so we can infer that it was a horizontal tear and this is the meniscal fragment and this is the horizontal flap tear with the fragment displaced in the meniscal tibial recess right here. So again, I'm talking about the apostrophe sign and the comma sign, this is a comma sign. And by the way, in this paper right here, they have just described the uh, comma sign and the apostrophe sign for uh, vertical flap tears. And here I'm showing you cases of uh, comma sign. I'm gonna show another case with apostrophe sign, the next case, uh, that it came from a horizontal tear as well. So the comma sign and the apostrophe sign, it can uh, occur with the uh, horizontal flap tears uh, as well, not just with vertical flap tears. And here, uh, continue showing this first case right here. In the sagittal plane, we can see that the uh, inferior, inferior leaf of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus is missing right here and we can see the meniscal fragment right here so that's a dislocated horizontal flap tear but when i call a horizontal flap tear i'm infer inferring almost always inferring that the fragment or the meniscal flap is dislocated because otherwise it's just a horizontal tear and here in the axial plane uh here is the meniscal fragment right here at the meniscal tibial recess and let's go to our last case. In this case, it's another case of a horizontal flap tear. Look, uh, there is no ghost sign, no partial ghost sign. The, the, the inner portion of the meniscus is not uh, amputated. It's not truncated. We can see that the meniscus still preserve its triangular morphology right here. And we can see a superior uh, meniscal fragment going to the meniscal femoral recess right here. So again, this is a apostrophe sign coming from a um, uh, horizontal tear and not from a vertical flap tear. And here in the sagittal plane, showing the fragment right here. And in the axial plane, the fragment is located in this region right here. So final tips, last tips about this, uh, about this video. Uh, the dislocated meniscal flap or fragment can migrate to different regions, meniscal recess, joint space, intercondylar notch. Here I just have showed you uh, uh, one of the most common places where we can find the fragments of a flap tear. Uh, parrot big tear, vertical flap tear, and radio oblique tear, they mean the same thing, okay? And use the term horizontal flap tear if the meniscal fragment is dislocated and you recognize that it came from a horizontal tear, 
okay because otherwise it's just a horizontal tear and of course there are some exceptions look this case right here it is a horizontal tear but you, we can appreciate that this horizontal tear it comes back to the inferior articular surface again so we can see that here we have a flap we have a meniscal fragment right here so in cases like that that's rare okay i describe this a uh, horizontal flap there even with the fragment in the in its usual position with the fragment it's not dislocated and by the way uh some of these cases the meniscal fragment it can migrate migrates to the intercondylar notch and it can form or uh, a lesion that's called a emi bucket handle tear i'm gonna talk about more about that in the video about the bucket handle tears but just to spice things up a little bit at the end of this video so that's it for this video thank you for your attention have a great day and see you in the next video